today's our topic of discussion is abrasions abrasions are the defects produced by the lenses or optical devices uh, when a object is converted into an image with the help of an optical system let us consider we have an optical system or lens and uh, we have object at one side of our lens uh, when we discuss about its image we know that we draw a parallel line from the object to the principal axis and pass this line from the focus of the lens and one line is passed from the center of the pole of the lens and where these two lines intersect we get the image of our object if this is our object we get image on the another side and uh, sometimes on the same side as that of object it depends whether we are placing the object before the focus of the lens or away in between the focus or in between the twice of the focus or away from the twice of the focus of the length uh, usually we uh, give two assumptions that the object is uh, giving rays very nearby to the principal axis it means the rays which are, we are considering are very nearby to the principal axis secondly we also assume that if the object is if the rays coming from the object are making some angle with the principal axis then these angles are very small angles hence uh, the lens is also considered uh, with a small aperture but in normal cases it doesn't happen uh, the object which giving rays or for which we have to find out the image uh, may give the rays away from the principal axis also hence the practical situation is neglecting the first point similarly as we have considered the all the angles are, uh, with the principal axis are very small it may be or may not be happen in practical situation thirdly as we have considered the aperture of the lenses are very small but in case of telescope as well as in the case of microscope the lens lenses or the convex lens are taken up of large curvature and due to which we not only consider the rays which are very nearby to the principal axis we also get the rays from the object which are far away from the principal axis the rays which are very nearby to the principal axis are known as paraaxial rays and the rays which are far away from the principal axis these are known as marginal rays and due to the large aperture of the lens the paraaxial rays and the marginal rays both contribute to give a bright and magnified image of from the optical system and because of these marginal and the paraaxial rays the lens contribute a prismatic effect and due to the prismatic effect the rays which are coming on the lens they get dispersed and due to the dispersion phenomena the rays doesn't concentrate or converge on single point if they are not converging at single point it means we are getting blurred image or a number of images and due to this defect of the lenses or or the optical system 
we get defects in the image and these defect of the images are known as abrasion then how we will define abrasion it means abrasions are the defects which are produced by the optical systems or optical lenses hence these are nothing else than the defects produced by the optical system or we can say that the lenses which we are used to magnify the object or to see the object clearly there are two type of abrasions based on the type of light which are reflected by the object or which is coming from the object towards the lens one is known as chromatic abrasion and another is known as a chromatic abrasion what is chromatic abrasion in case of chromatic abrasion we consider the light coming from the object is polychromatic it means the light considered of a large number of wavelengths and in case of achromatic abrasion we consider that a single wavelength light is coming from the object to the lens it means the light considered in achromatic abrasion is monochromatic in nature what happens if the lens is given a chromatic light incident on it what type of image we will obtain in case of chromatic abrasion now our concentration is on chromatic abrasion as we know that the lens whether it is concave lens or whether it is convex lens the thickness varies from pole to the marginal as on the upper side as well as in the lower side and if we are giving different type of wavelengths to this lens this lens will show the dispersion phenomena as we have seen in case of prism as we saw that when the prism is given white light it disperses white light into seven colors and we will find out the coming light in the form of vibgyor same case happens in the case of prism in the case of lens they it also shows the prismatic effect this prismatic effect is due to the different refractive index of this prism with respect to the wavelength there is a principle or there is a equation which is known as cauchy's equation and this equations give the relation in between the refractive index that is the characteristic of the material of the prism or the lens and the wavelength it is given as the refractive index is equal to a plus b divided by lambda square it is the wavelength of that radiation which is incident on the prism or which is incident on the lens where a and b are representing the some constants and as we finding out that if the wavelength is large it means refractive index is very small and if we are using white light in case of white light the red color light has large wavelength it means greater the wavelength lesser will be the refractive index if we compare the refractive index of blue color and red color light we will find out that as red color light has large wavelength as compared to the blue color light we will give the opposite relation in between their refractive index here lambda is large in the other case we will find out that the refractive index of red color is small as compared to the blue color what will it results if refractive index of one wavelength is less than than the other one we will find out that this refractive index will give the effect on the focal length of that particular color as we already studied that 
the Lenz formula is given by 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 into 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2. What is mu? That is the refractive index of your given lens. What is r1? It is the radius of curvature of your first surface. If we complete this surface, we will find out a circle and the radius of the circle is given by r1. What is r2? Again, it is the radius of curvature of your second surface. If you complete the curve, we will find out that the radius is our r2. It means that if the refractive index will change, it will affect the focal length. If the refractive index is large, the focal length will be small and if the refractive index is small, then the focal length is large. If we consider the case of blue color and red color wavelength, blue color wavelength is less as compared to the red color but on the second hand, there is a relation in between refractive index of red color and blue color we will also give a comparison in between their focal length as give we have the re obtained the relation in between the refractive index and the focal length in the third relation we will find out that the focal length for the blue color will be small as compared to the focal length of the red color because the blue color refractive index is large if this is large this will be small hence we get the focal length for the blue color for the lens is small as compared to the red color and due to this different focal length we will find out that if we have given the two type of radiations let one is of a red color and another is of blue color to the lens with the refractive index mu we will find out that the blue color image will be near by the pole of the lens and we will get an another image which is of red color which is far away from the blue color it means for a single object which is giving us two type of wavelength towards the lens we are getting two images for one object we are getting two images it means this there is a defect and this defect is we are discussing this is none other than chromatic defect chromatic defect is given in two types one is known as longitudinal chromatic defect and another is known as lateral chromatic defect. Now we will discuss about longitudinal chromatic effect. What is longitudinal chromatic effect? So far we have find out that if the light polychromatic light that is a uh, light having more than one wavelength is passed through the lens we will get number of images on the other side of the lens and we will find out that the blue color image is nearby the pole of the lens and the red color image is find out far away from the pole of the lens then we will easily find out what is longitudinal chromatic abrasion. Longitudinal chromatic abrasion is the defect which is defined as the chromatic abrasion which gives different images on the principal axis or also known as axial line. If this image is non-defective we will get an object an image for an object we will have a single object and we will get an 
single image but due to the chromatic aberration we are getting different type of images different color of images at different points or at different focal length of the axial line and this is known as longitudinal chromatic aberration how we will measure longitudinal chromatic aberration longitudinal chromatic aberration is measured in two ways it depends whether the object is lying at infinite if the object is lying at infinity then the longitudinal chromatic aberration is measured by the difference in between the focal length of the blue color in uh, the difference in between the focal length of the red color and the focal length of the blue color secondly if the object is not placed at infinity then the measurement of longitudinal chromatic aberration is given by the difference in between the image positions of the red color image and the blue color image hence the measurement depends upon the object position if the object position is at infinity then we will have the measurement given by the difference in between the focal length for the red color image and the difference uh, focal length of the blue color image but if the position of the object is not at infinity then we will get the measurement by this that is the position of the uh, red color image with minus uh, the position of your blue color image we will easily find out the formula for the measurement if we didn't know the focal length for the red color as well as the blue color as we know that the lens formula is given by 1 by f is equal to mu minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 this formula will change for the red color because the focal length for the red color is represented by fr as respective the refractive index is represented by mu r for red color we will get 1 by fr is equal to mu r minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 similarly for blue color we will have the formula f 1 by fb is equal to mu b minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 we have to find out the difference or the term fr minus fb for this we will subtract equation 1 from equation 2 and we will get 1 by fb minus 1 by fr is equal to that is mu b minus mu r 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 to make this equation or the formula generalize we are multiplying this by mu minus 1 and dividing this equation by mu minus 1 this mu is representing the mean refractive index of the lens then we will have mu minus 1 1 by r1 minus 1 by r2 we can separate this term at one side and this division on the other side that is mu b minus mu r divided by mu minus 1 to simplify the formula we know that this equation can be replaced by the average focal length of the lens hence we can substitute this term as 1 by f then 1 by f and this term that is mu b minus mu r divided by mu minus 1 can be represented by the dispersive power of the lens where dispersive power is represented by omega and given by mu b minus mu r divided by mu minus 1 this whole term is represented with the help of the dispersive power of the material of the lens 
on this side that is 1 by fb minus 1 by fr if you are taking the lcm we will get fb into fr fr minus fb that the term which we have required for the measurement of chromatic abrasion to simplify our equation we are changing this product in the terms of our mean or average focal length of our assumed lens let us consider fb is equal to f approximately and similarly fr is approximately equal to f it means fb fr product can be replaced with mean focal length if we substitute this mean focal length in this term then we will have fr minus fb is equal to f square by f into dispersive power and on cancel out outing these two mean focal lengths we will get on the right hand side that is mean focal length into dispersive power giving the measurement of our longitudinal chromatic abrasion hence this is the way by which we can obtain the longitudinal chromatic abrasion which is nothing else than the distance on the axial or on the principal line between the focal length of the red color image and the focal length for the blue color there is another type of chromatic abrasion also and the second type of chromatic abrasion is known as lateral chromatic abrasion in case of lateral chromatic abrasion instead of finding out the difference between the, the focal length of the two colors we will give the difference between the magnification of the images obtained in red color and blue color let us again considering that there is a convex lens and from the object we are obtaining two type of radiations and one is of red color and another is of blue color we know that at nearby the pole we will obtain an image of blue color and far away from the pole we will obtain an image of red color and the images positions are different as well as the images magnification is also different in lateral chromatic abrasions we are finding out the difference set between the magnification of blue color and the red color image hence in lateral chromatic abrasion if we want to measure the lateral chromatic abrasion it is nothing else than the size of the red color image minus the size of the blue color image let us consider this is the size of our red color image represented by hr and this is the size of the uh, color blue color image that is represented by hb then lateral chromatic abrasion measurement is given by hr minus hb this is our lateral chromatic abrasion it is the difference in size of red and blue images made by the lens now we will find out the ways by which we can minimize or we can reduce or we can limit or remove the chromatic abrasion we can remove the chromatic abrasion with the help of a chromatic doublet what is a chromatic doublet it is a system obtained with the help of two optical lenses it depends it is of two types again a chromatic doublet can be a combination of two different lenses and it can be a combination of two similar lenses first we will discuss the chromatic doublet obtained with the help of two different lenses
so far we have find out that the chromatic abrasion is produced due to the difference in between the focal length of different colors and the size of the images it can be eliminated if we use an other optical lens which shift the red color focal length near to the pole and which shift the blue color focal length far away the pole and it can only happen if convex lens is giving the focal length for the blue color nearby if we use concave lens we will get the opposite result in this type of achromatic doublet we are using two different lenses one lens is convex lens and another lens which is producing the opposite effect is concave lens on the other side we have also take care that this effect is produced due to the refractive index of the material the refractive index of the material will decide the focal length it means the convex lens which we are using should be such that it will give the refractive index for the blue color nearby and the red color far by in case of two different lenses to produce achromatic doublet the convex lens is made up of crown glass and the concave lens is made of flint glass so that the refractive index can adjust the focal length of the two colors again the third point which we sh should have to take care about to produce an achromatic doublet optical system convex lens made up of crown glass should have small focal length and the concave lens which is made up of flint glass should have a large focal length represented by f dash in our case hence we are obtaining a a chromatic doublet which looks like this that there is a convex lens which is made up of crown glass and a small focal length and it is attached with another lens which is a concave lens made up of flint glass and having a large focal length this is the achromatic doublet and if again we will replace an object which is giving two radiations having a red color and blue color we will find out that these two lenses will counterbalance the effects of each other and we will get a single image and the color of the image is same as that of the color of the object and in this way we can minimize or we can limit or we can eliminate the chromatic effect when we are discussing the wavelengths of these two lenses which are com combined in a chromatic doublet we should use f divided by f dash that is the ratio of these focal lengths should be equal to the ratio of their dispersive power this is the condition of the a chromatic doublet and in this case w that is the dispersive power of one lens that should not be equal to the dispersive power of another lens otherwise if the, the dispersive power of both the lenses are same we will find out that the very combination which we have produced for the achromatic behavior this will behave like a plane lens it will nothing more than a glass secondly that the focal length of the converging that is convex lens that should be less than the focal length of the convex lens concave lens this these two considerations should be taken in account 
when we have to produce our achromatic doublet in this case the two different lenses we have taken and they are in contact with each other we can also prepare the achromatic doublet by taking same lens or lenses made up of same material but we have to take care that their focal length should be different having different focal length and in this case these two lenses are apart from each other then what are the conditions where the same lens is made up of same material but having different focal lengths can behave like a achromatic doublet let us consider we have two lenses convex lenses having focal length f and f dash we have to apart them with a distance x such that the distance is given by the average distance or average of their focal lengths only then this combination or this optical system behave like an achromatic doublet and this combination of two convex lenses having different focal lengths and aparted from an average distance of their focal length is also known as Huygens piece it means we have two type of achromatic optical systems which can remove the chromatic abrasion one is made up of different materials and different nature of our lenses but they are in touch with each other whereas on the other side we can produce the achromatic doublet with same material lenses of same material now they are having a distance apart from each other